Okay, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present my work here, the gender gap in the executive promotions. So in 2017, women are um, about half of the working force, but if you look at the CEOs, there's only 5% of CEOs of large US corporations are female. So this lack of diversity has attract, um, attracted the politi uh, politicians' attentions. So to address this lack of diversity, over 15 countries have implemented some form of uh, board gender quota in the last uh, couple of years. But how effective these policies are hinges on why there are few women um, in the executive team at the first place. So one of the explanation, commonly uh, mentioned explanation is a pipeline. So there's not enough female candidates in the pipeline. But in this study, I focus on the female who are in the pipeline. These are the senior executives. So I ask, are female executives promoted at a similar rate at their male peers? So I look at the promotions, internal promotions, to four corporate levels. They are the senior vice president, executive vice president, president, and the CEO. Here I focus on the internal promotions because these corporate levels are not comparable across firms. So someone may argue there are more male candidates in the candidate pool, so it's not surprising we found more men get promoted. And here I look at each individual uh, executive's promotion probability. So I use ex this example to illustrate why the gender composition of the candidate pool should not, in fact, uh, impact the gap. So in the first graph, we, we have a gender balanced pool. We have um, five males and five females. If they are of the equal quality, uh, each of them have 10% of the chance getting promoted in the next year. So there is no gender gap, promotion gap. And look at the second pool. This is a male dominated pool. We only have one female candidate and we have nine uh, male candidates. But if they are of the same, uh, same quality, the promotion rate for each of them is still 10% and there is no gender gap. So it's not surprisingly I document uh, um, gender promotion gap. So the next question is to ask why there is a gap. So here I look at the two explanations. The first is the functional expertise. So because women, even though they advance to the executive level, so they seem clustered at the positions, supporting positions such as HR or legal, and the managers from these positions, regardless of their gender, have limited upward mobility in comparison to managers who came from like general managers or from uh, operations. So that is the first factor I look at. And the second factor is the discrimination. But as we know, it's very difficult to measure discrimination directly. Here I try to identify the discrimination by looking at how the gender gap responds to the product market competition. So let's imagine that if the promotion, um, the, the decision to promote less women is efficient decision for the firm because uh, women don't want to get promoted. They have other uh, family duties. And when the product market becomes more competitive, the firm should still make the same decision because they are making the best decision for the firm already. On the other hand, if the initial decisions are not uh, efficient and then when the product market um, become more competitive, um, the gender gap will narrow because the competition will force firm to operate more efficiently. Okay, so the data I use for this study is from Bodex. The Bodex compiles the uh, information on the directors and the executives from the corporate level um, vice president and above. That's why when I look at the promotions, I look at from promotions to the executive vice president, uh, sorry, senior vice president, one level above the vice president. And the sample period is from 2000 to 2015. Um, in comparison with uh, executive comp, it's, uh, which is a commonly used data set to study the executives in, un in the US, the Bodex has two advantages. The first one is inclusion criterion of uh, executive comp is pay, not rank. So even though we know pay and rank are normally um, correlated, but this correlation may be weaker for women because the female managers are less than the male managers. So this selection issue may bias the result here. And the second is uh, um, the Bodex has more executives per firm year. So I have uh, 8.3 executives compared with 5.7 executives. So this allows me to study promotions, not just to the CEO level. So I look at the promotions to a few levels leading up to the CEO positions. 
So as we know, the job allocation cross-gender is endogenous. And the Blau and Can reports that in 2010, the industry accounts for about 17% of the gender gap, the gender pay gap in the general uh, workforce. So I use a firm fixed effect to control for the fact that men and women may select into different industries or different firms. And also, we know uh, women are usually uh, in a relatively junior positions within the executive team. So the promotion rate of the junior positions may be different from the promotion rate uh, in the senior positions. So I use the uh, rank fix effect to control for this factor. And then third, and the women are clustered in the supporting positions such as uh, uh, HR. And these positions, uh, um, as per the um, Blau and Can, this is the single most significant factor so occupation to explain the wage gap. So at first, I will try to quantify to what extent the occupation can explain the promotion gap. And next, I will include in the um, occupation fixed effect in the rest of the study. Okay, here is uh, um, some summary statistics of my sample. So um, in my samples, I started with vice president. There are over 15% of vice presidents are female. But when we move up to the corporate ladder, to the CEO levels, there's only less than 5% of CEOs who are female. And this is a chart to show the percentage of female executives uh, in each function. So uh, if we look at HR or um, PR, we have over 30% of executives who are female. And then we look at the other side, uh, operations or sales, and there's uh, less than 10% of uh, executives who are female. Um, okay, and uh, this is a uh, uh, summary statistics uh, of men and women. So in my final sample, I have over 9,000 female unique female executives and over 62,000 uh, unique male uh, executives. And the promotion rate, so in each year, the promotion probability for female is uh, uh, 4.5, and the promotion rate for the uh, men is uh, 5.8. And so this pattern, like men have slightly higher promotion rate, uh, is uh, the same in uh, different corporate levels. So this is my first uh, uh, regression results. And here, the uh, independent var um, variable a dependent variable is the promotion. It's a dummy variable that is equal to 100 if a manager is promoted in the next year. And the main variable of interest is a female dummy. And here we say the female dummy is uh, uh, significant uh, negative in all the regressions. And then let's look at the um, uh, magnitude. So the magnitude of the gap is measured by the coefficient of the female dummy divided by the promotion rate of man. So the rate is uh, uh, varies between um, 20 to 30 percent. So in the first regression, I only control for the year fixed effect and uh, the other control variable for their education background, their age, uh, firm size, and uh, uh, experience. And then I gradually add in the um, other fixed effect, firm fixed effect, uh, the rank fixed effect, and function fixed effects. So let's look at the uh, third and fourth columns. So once I add in the functional uh, fixed uh, effects, the um, promotion gap is reduced from about 30% to 20%. So it's about one third of initial gap documented in the study can be explained by the functions. And also, um, if I split, this is for all the managers. So if I split at each um, corporate level, and the functions uh, becomes increasingly important when we move up to the corporate ladder. Okay, how this is uh, the, the regression about the discrimination. Here I use three measures from Phillips, uh, um, Holbrook Phillips Data Library to measure the industry level um, the competition. The first is the Harfordno Index. And second is the similarity, so that it measures how similar a firm's product is uh, uh, to its rivalry firm's products. And the last measure is the fluidity, so that it measures how quickly the product market changes. And here the main um, variable of interest is the interaction term between the female dummy and a high competition dummy. 
So here I found this term is significantly um, positive, uh, suggesting that the promotion gap is lower in the industry with uh, uh, higher competition. So let's look at the economic magnitude. So in a less competitive industry measured by the Herfindahl Index, so the gender promotion gap is about 25%. But uh, in a more competitive industry, this gap is reduced to 14%. Okay, the sample I showed you before is, uh, has all the managers. And now I split the sample into different corporate level. So I'm just interested to say how the, gender, uh, the, the promotion gap changes across different corporate levels. So here, the first column have all the vice presidents and then all the uh, senior vice president, uh, executive vice president, and the president. And the main variable of interest here is the female dummy. And we say in the first three columns, uh, the female dummy is uh, significantly negative. But uh, the, the economic magnitude is measured by the coefficient of female and divided by the um, promotion probability of men is about 20 uh, to 27%. Uh, but when we look at the last column, so this female dummy is uh, statistically and economically insignificant. So that shows uh, me that when female who successfully to advance to the present level, they actually have a very fair chance to become the next CEO. The gap is uh, higher at a uh, relatively um, lower level. Okay, um, so in this um, test, I'm trying to say the correlation between the gender gap and the board diversity, because we have this board gender quota. We hope if we have more female on the board and the benefit of equality will trickle down to the rest of the firm. So I look at how the, uh, the promotion gap will change if we have more female directors. So in the first column, I measure diversity use the percentage of female uh, directors. And this is a dummy variable equals to one if we have more than one female directors, more than two female directors, more than three female directors. That's, that's a board that reached the critical mass. Um, but um, across all this specification, I found no evidence that the promotion gap is lower uh, in a more diverse board. Okay, so uh, there are other reasons to explain the gender gap in the labor market outcome. And that includes human capital accumulation, family responsibilities, job flexibility, competitiveness, or negotiation. So these factors can explain there is a gender gap in the promotion. But it's less clear how this would explain that promotion gap narrows when uh, the competition goes up. Um, in fact, if we look at these three factors, family responsibility, job flexibility, and competitiveness, we would imagine if um, um, female executives shy away from promotions because they have all these constraints or preference, and the gap actually would widen when the competition goes up. It's because when the competition goes up, um, the job will become more demanding, time demanding, um, less flexible, and more competitive. So these three, three theories would predict a wi uh, widened uh, gender gap uh, when the competition goes up. Uh, it's not very clear how the negotiation would change for a short-term uh, industry level um, competition uh, measure. And then the last one is uh, someone will argue man and a woman leading a different style. Maybe the female leadership style becomes more valuable or more effective when the competition goes up. Um, the literature in the gender differences in leadership style found that the difference is mainly in the, um, uh, the gender integrated area and also it's more effective in the gender integrated area. So the next I will split my sample into the male dominated uh, area and the gender integrated area. So if the correlation I showed you before um, is driven by um, the fact that the female leadership style is in demand, and this effect should be more pronounced in the uh, gender integrated area. So here, um, the male dominant industries are the industry with less than 15% of uh, executives are female. 
and the gender integrated industries are the industries uh, has more than 50% uh, of uh, executives who are female. And in these two subsamples, I found roughly a similar result. So there's no clear evidence showing that the result is come from the uh, gender integrated area. And next, I was split by the functions. So the male dominant functions are the functions that uh, has less than 10% of executives who are female. And the gender integrated functions are the functions that have more than 10% um, of the executives who are female. And here I choose 10% and 15% so I can roughly equally uh, split my sample. And here I found the result actually show up in the male dominant functions. So that is not consistent with the idea the female leadership is in, de in demand when the competition goes up. That drives my result. Okay, even though I highlight two benefits of using executive comp to study the gender promotions, but uh, sorry, the BODEX, and BODEX data also have its limit. So some of the BODEX data may be self-reported. As we know, uh, there is a difference into, uh, in the promotions. If men are more likely to promote themselves on the internet, and their information will be more likely to be captured by the BODEX data. So to overcome this selection issue, here I restrict the sample to the C-suite uh, executives. So these are the executives have chief in their job title, because they are the chief uh, executives, uh, very important for the companies, so their information is more likely to be disclosed by the companies instead of by themselves. So in this subsample of C-suite executives, I found similar result, a gender gap in the promotion and also the gap uh, narrows when the competition goes up. Um, so for my, my competition measure from um, Holberg and Phillips Data Library is based on the text analysis of the annual reports. So it captures competition of uh, between among the public uh, firm, public <coughs> United firms, but it doesn't capture the competition from say private firms or from the overseas uh, uh, firms. So to um, uh, address this concern, I use the alternative measure of uh, um, the pressure the firms will face. I use the takeover threat. So the idea is similar to the pro uh, to the um, competition. So when the firm faces a higher uh, takeover threat, that will force them to um, perform more efficiently. So uh, here I found um, the the gender gap is lower in the firms that facing higher takeover threats. So to conclude, in this paper I ask. Are female executives promoted at a similar rate than the male executives? And if the answer is yes, and discrimination and the lack of relevant experience plays a role. So this is the first paper to explore the BODEX senior management data. And it studies promotions not just to the CEOs, but the promotions to a few um, positions leading up to the CEO positions. So in the recent academic studies, sheds uh, lights on a lot of other factors to explain the gender differences in the labor market um, outcomes, such as job flex flexibility or the gender differences in the psych psychological factors. So in this study, I'm trying to highlight even though the other factors are important, but the usual suspect, that's discrimination, still plays a role. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Jing. Um, and now Marianne Bertrand from the University of Chicago will um, provide the discussion. Thank you so much. I think, uh, sorry, do I need this? Yeah. So I think Jing did a really good job kind of uh, summarizing, I think, all the key results uh, in the paper. So, in a nutshell, though, this paper uses um, Bordex uh, data in um, kind of documents um, gender differences in the rates of promotion between men and women in this, uh, in this data set. Uh, differences that are not just limited to promotion to CEOs, but seem to be also related to promotion to um, kind of lower, lower level, relatively lower level still at the top of the hierarchy, kind of promotions to um, senior vice president, uh, president, uh, and so on. Um, I, um, so that's the main, the main results and then the paper goes into trying to um, 
understand what is behind this, uh, this general difference in promotion. Uh, and the main argument that is being made is that um, there's um, patterns that suggest that these differences are stronger in uh, industries that are less competitive. And um, Jing's preferred interpretation of this finding is to say that it's just a reflection of taste based discrimination. And the final result that I would highlight is related to uh, kind of board, uh, board diversity. Uh, and there, uh, the main result is that there's no relationship between the, the gender gap in promotion and whether or not the board is diverse. Um, so let me just kind of summarize, you know, kind of my, you know, my, my main comments uh, uh, about the paper. Um, I think I, I'm not familiar with board X data. Um, I'm sure many of you are, but I, but I'm not. And certainly, kind of the the go-to data set, you know, kind of as you know, Jing has mentioned, to kind of look at this question in the past has been really has been ExecuComp. Um, it is my understanding that there are um, kind of related studies that have been done in the ExecuComp data uh, that, uh, that fail to find any gender differences in the rate of promotion in ExecuComp. So given that you have um, you know, kind of existing studies with ExecuComp failing to find the kind of pattern that you find in BoardX, I think is really, really important to spend more time explaining what this, uh, what this data set is. And again, this might be just my fault that I don't know enough about the data, but I think the paper would be really well served and you'd be really well served in really highlighting you know, the strengths and you know, add weaknesses of, uh, of these data, especially in light of this other work that you know, seem to be suggesting kind of different, uh, different patterns than the one you observe in BoardX. So I think just would love to understand a bit in more details kind of what are the firms that are, you know, that are in your data set that are not you know, in Execucom. This is much broader in terms of, uh, in terms of coverage. Um, similarly, you, know, kind of you have a much broader range of, you know, of executives, but again, kind of I would like to understand this um, this better uh, is Execupon, Execupon a strict subset of BoardX? You know, if it is, then maybe worthwhile to kind of do some PL analysis where you know, kind of you look at your Execucon within <laughs> your BoardX. Uh, I got you know, kind of really concerned. You know, that's too strong. The self-reporting, I think you just have to explain much better. I don't understand how one ends up in the data or not in the data. I think Execucom, I understood it is like firms <laughs> have got to report who are the top five paid employees, and that's pretty clear and transparent. I mean, they might be lying, but you know, uh, but that's pretty clear and transparent. What is supposed to be in Execucom? I don't have the same understanding for BoardX, and I'm very worried about self-report. And, and you, you do talk about it, right? So, um, you know, kind of one can you know convolute complicated stories about people wanting to brag about promotion or not. You know, really they haven't been promoted. So I think <laughs> self-reporting kind of raises some concern uh, for me. I was really not totally clear about how the data is constructed and whether you can backfill people's histories. So I think more transparency as to what people have got to report in this, you know, in this data set uh, would be useful. Uh, there's no, there's no um, information about earnings that's used in the paper. It's not in the data. Okay, so I'll scratch that. But that's, you know, I think obviously really important. And in many ways, I guess, as I, I totally get the desire to move beyond Execucom because Execucom is so constraining because it's only you know kind of the top five people, but then you know are there not other ways, you know even if you are not in Scandinavia to understand who are the people at the top of an organization, you know I think people are make, making creating use of, of things like LinkedIn that you know kind of really if you start scraping these data sets you can really build yourself something that's going to be um, you know kind of much. Um, kind of, I think, much, much deeper about, you know, kind of what's in the organization. So, again, so I think, the, I think you heard me. I think more, 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 more clarity about, you know, kind of what this data is would, would I think, make me feel more comfortable with the result. Uh, people were asking this question. There, there's, like, the secretary. What, what, is, what is that? This 25% of the, of the sample is made of secretaries. What's what is the secretary? It must be corporate side. Yeah. 25% of secretaries were female. That's yeah, 25% were female. <laughs> yeah, but um, is that is that like what is what is that? The corporate secretaries. Mm. Corporate secretaries, and those board. have high yeah, titles. It's yeah, the board. It's the board. It's mm. the, the board secretary. Who, who deal with board. It's the board secretaries. All right. So, but that's just an example of like you know, kind of I I I do not know that. All right. So that's my main point about the data. Let me just talk briefly about you know the outcome that that you focus on, which is really about about, about internal promotion. So. Um, so the way the data is constructed is that if someone leaves the firm um, or leaves the sample, bas basically it's just not counted. And I guess 
I guess this is fine, but I, I don't quite understand why we would not want to also look at external promotions. So maybe it's a data constraint. If it's a data constraint, I think you should make that clear. But you know, it's a convoluted story. You know, I don't believe it, but you know, I guess that's, that's okay. Uh, you know, kind of it could very well be that firms really struggle to promote their women because <coughs> they face so much competition to retain those women that everybody wants to, you know, kind of promote them. So by excluding systematically external promotion uh, from the data, you might be really missing an important part of the action. So I think it would be nice to try to um, uh, kind of think about alternative ways to, de to, to define your outcome of interest that we broader than just the internal, uh, the internal side. Um, I guess I still like pay, but now I understand that pay is not a variable, so we'll forget about that. And I guess more, more generally, I thought that as you stress, one of the main advantage of, of this data compared to executive comp is that it covers more individuals. You get a kind of a deeper view of what's at the top of the organization. Is there no, uh, nothing beyond you could do in terms of like really taking a deeper dive in terms of you know, this hierarchy? You have information you know, about who is at the same level you know, kind of, and who, you know, kind of relative comparisons between different kinds of employees that might be at the same level could be considered for promotion to VP. Is there no ways to kind of, you know, exploit that um, as, as alternative uh, outcomes and what one could look at? All right, so let me just, you know, <coughs> talk briefly about the control. So, you know, this is really the tough part about the paper, right? Ultimately, the paper is just uh, a study of like gender gaps where we are putting our face in the quality of our controls. And just we just hope that whatever we has estimate when we, you know, kind of when we compute this gender dummy is really about gender differences and not about other things that are related with gender, uh, but really have nothing to do with, uh, with gender. So, and that's, you know, that's a core difficulty with, you know, a paper of this stuff. I mean, this is not a, not a complaint. I mean, I think we need to do this exercise, but as we do them, I think we have to be kind of really thoughtful about how we think about the controls that are included in our regression. So, <coughs> Uh, and it's obviously super tricky because, you know, one example, you talk a lot about, you know, kind of the endogeneity of, of, um, of the, 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 the job, the, the, the functional expertise. You know, do I want to have this as a controller in my regression? Are women, you know, mainly in PR and HR because that's what they want to do or because that's the only jobs that they can get, right? So we have all of these difficulties of over versus under controlling in these regressions. But with that point, and I think we all have a good understanding of that, I'd love to see a bit more kind of sensitivity of results to things like, you know, not just like dummies for like functional expertise, but like combination of functional expertise. Maybe the kind of people that get promoted to CEOs are people that have had exposure to operations and marketing and corporate strategy. So if you have people's kind of functional expertise history, you can maybe kind of compute uh, I guess richer variables about the, the career history of these people uh, in the farm or uh, in the all, um, uh, you know, they all kind of, the entire career, uh, even before they were these firms. I mean, one, one thing that, that we know is, is really important when it comes to, you know, kind of women is the fact that, you know, experience, you know, kind of um, uh, actual experience may, may, may be quite different than that of men. Uh, I don't know how much data you have in this, in your data to, you know, to account for this, but do you have ways to kind of look at career interruptions? You know, that could be something that's strongly correlated with gender and could also obviously, you know, matter for, you know, for rates of promotion. You know, if you don't have information on career interruption, I think what's quite standard when you look at gender wage gap, for example, is to allow the impact of, of age, and you have age control and equality in age in your aggression, which makes sense, but to allow the impact of age to vary by, you know, by gender. I think that's one indirect way to account for the fact that, you know, experience, you know, accumulate differently between, uh, between men and women. So again, this is super difficult. There's no right <coughs> way to do this. There's lots of over-controlling, you know, danger. Um, but I think you, I would like to see a bit more sensitivity, at least, of the results to, uh, to these variables. All right, so let me talk about this product market competition, which is really the main test in the paper to, you know, um, that, that Jing, I think, used to suggest that a lot of what's going on here is really has got to do with, uh, with discrimination. The, the rationale behind this goes back to, you know, kind of the, the Gary Becker taste-based discrimination. You know, kind of if, you know, kind of 
um, if, if markets are super competitive, the employers will not have the ability to indulge in their, um, in their uh, sexism or racism, because if they do, they're going to get kicked out of the market, right? So I think that's the argument, uh, the, the, the theoretical argument that, you know, Jane Kidd uses to focus on this public market competition. And the way this is implemented in the paper is really by interacting uh, gender with um, uh, three measures, but the one I understand the best is just the HHI index, which is an industry level uh, measure of, of product market Product market competition, and she breaks the sample into above and below median at the industry level. I think that, that that only varies at the industry level. I find these measures to be really, you know, kind of very much of a black box. And I think I'm, you know, kind of I think it's super interesting to probe on these dimensions, but I think you're gonna have to do much more to convince the reader that this has to do with um, the, the the channels that you have, you know, that you have in mind. Um, I'd like to understand better kind of what are the, you know, what are the correlates of the HHI in the data? You know, does it correlate to, uh, you know, kind of uh, profitability? I think you do a little bit of that. Does it correlate to mockups? Let's understand, you know, kind of this HHI measure uh, better in this data set. Uh, let's familiarize ourselves with it before just simply interacting with it. I would be, you know, kind of, uh, you know, I would love to see something, you know, maybe figures would be great. Uh, that show me how this varies. So I think it's essentially kind of breaking industries into above and below this median, show me how this looks like, show me results on an industry by industry basis and then group them in terms of above, below, median. Uh, show me some scientific of these results to like removing one industry at a time. I just, just, just going to do more to, uh, to convince me. I think probably, I think maybe more, you know, practically immediately relevant for, I think, I think the way I understood the paper to be implemented is that you do concern yourself a lot with the, the possibility that this product market competition variable is, is correlated with a bunch of other stuff. And the way you address that is by directly controlling for these other stuff in your regression. But I don't think that's what you want to do, right? I think what you want to do is not introduce these potential correlates as direct controls, but you really want to introduce them interactive with gender. Um, okay. And then, you know, kind of, this is all great, but you also have the ability with the data that you're looking at to not just look at the gender gap in promotion, but simply look at the gender gap in women's representation uh, between firms that are above and below the median in terms of this product market competition measure. That's the thing that people have been looking at, you know, kind of more the stuff that Sandy Black has been doing. Um, so you can also look at this in your data and you should do that. And since this is not your paper, maybe that's another paper, but it would be natural to, uh, to consider it. And then finally, I think the board results are, you know, are interesting. Um, you know, I, the, the, the one thing I would stress is that I, if I understand it well, these regressions are run with like firm fixed effects. So you are really leveraging kind of like some variations over time in these measures. It's just how much variation do you have in this variable? Again, kind of spend more time documenting your data uh, would be really useful. And then it's kind of the, the last few points, kind of reverting to things I said at the beginning. You know, at the core, we don't think that it's, you know, the boards that, you know, make the direct decision of whether or not to promote a certain person to, you know, kind of uh, senior VP, from VP to senior VP. Uh, it's going to be the people that are, you know, kind of above. So uh, immediately above, not, not the board. So you have information of the diversity of the C-suite in your data. Why not also not do an exercise where you don't look more diversity, but diversity of, of, of the top uh, executive leadership within the organization? You know, and, and again, and that goes back to you know, the, the last point. I, I don't understand how far you can go with this, but is there a way you can really just trace, trace the hierarchy, figure out who's the boss of whom, and then you can do some interesting exercise about you know, kind of um, the gender of the boss and how that relates to differential promotion patterns. And I believe these are my comments. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Marianne. Um, Jing, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, sure. Wow, thanks a lot for the comments. That's a lot of comments, uh, good comments there. So I probably will just respond to some um, of them. 
Um, for the um, ExecCamp, actually, I replicate this study, use the uh, joint uh, of ExecCamp and Bodex, because all the experience measure has to come from Bodex. So for the ExecCamp, I can match about 90% of ExecCamp observation with the Bodex. And the results, uh, all the signs are the similar, but it's just much weaker. So the, the, um, the magni magnitude of the gender gap is uh, uh, less than 10%. Uh, instead of 20%. And when I look at the um, uh, interaction between the competition and the gap, the, the result is also weaker. Yes, so it's roughly uh, consistent, but just weaker result. I think that it makes sense because even this result, I found at the highest level, the gap is lower and it comes with many uh, more senior um, executives. So um, that's probably why I found stronger results using a larger uh, Bodex sample. And the Bodex, yes, I think um, the, the point about explaining the difference between ExecComp and uh, Bodex is really good and I should have spent more um, time to uh, in the writing to explain the difference between these two data sets. Um, I think the, the combination of the functions, like look deep, uh, dive deeper into the history, or like the, the past the functions with present functions, uh, that is really interesting, and uh, I think that, that I can try that. And the female um, uh, interaction uh, between female and age, and the, I have done that, so as a robustness check, so that I got similar results, and also interact all the uh, female dummy with uh, uh, all the control variables uh, in my analysis, so the result is similar. Um, continuous measure of the of the um, um, the, the the competition measure. Uh, I've done that, so I get similar results. Um, um, so I didn't figure out who is the boss of uh, all the promotions, but I look at if I promote from uh, vice uh, from vice president to say uh, executive vice president. I look at the gender composition of the executive president and trying to interact with the promotion, uh, uh, the, the, the gender gap. I, I could not find any uh, correlation there. Yeah, and, and just thanks a lot. There's a lot of good stuff there. <laughs> okay, um, perfect. So I think it's now time to collect questions. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, my question is related to the alternative explanations that you mentioned. Uh, your view is basically that uh, women's preference for flexibility and family uh, cannot explain the gender gap uh, because the prediction doesn't match uh, what you find uh, when the firm is facing higher competition or higher takeover pressure. Um, but uh, if you assume that the preferences can change and the marginal value for women to step in during the tough times can be higher, it will change the equilibrium outcome wh whether women will step in uh, for the higher positions to lead the firm. So it may predict that the gender gap will reduce when the firm face competition which matches the result you're presenting here. So I'm wondering how you view about uh, this interpretation. This is more a clarificatory question. Uh, when you talk about the promotion itself, d are we looking at if you don't get promoted, you leave the firm or you remain at the same rank? Or h how exactly is, I mean, so is promotion defined as up and out or <laughs> just you remain at the same rank? You remain the same, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, yes, yeah, so I have a background in management. I was interested in uh, this discussion about uh, women and leadership styles. So I was interested in what kind of research you're, you're looking at there because you know different types of studies. So for instance, some would say it's not so much a difference in how men in, and women lead, but rather in the perception of employees. So you'd have, if you're a woman manager, they would have other expectations on you, for instance, to be warm and so on. And you also have Considering that you look at um, top managers here, um, some of those studies are also at the lower level. So you know you have these traditional studies, but 
female managers are tough and not so friendly. And when you look into that, you have studies also, well, it's because, you know, it's a very low level and they don't have a lot of power in the organisation. So I was interested in, uh, do you differentiate between what types of studies? Are these studies of female managers kind of at a top level? Because a very different kind of leadership situation as compared to being at a very low level in terms of what you do. So what, what types of studies? Because there are studies from my perspective, that you wouldn't really have those great differences between how men and women lead, but rather how they are perceived. Okay. Um, Jane, if you could respond. Uh, uh, yes, so, um, so you have the alternative um, explanation. So I cannot complete address uh, like it's not because of the um, flexibility or other differences. Um, so my view is the, f the story may be more likely uh, to be driven by the discrimination because I, I think the preference probably won't, won't change in a very short term and, and uh, same as the, um, the human capital accumulation. So uh, how? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can yeah, talk. So it's uh, it's just how to interpret. So maybe the 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 channel of the correlation is not because of discrimination. It's because some other factors. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, but she's argued that the preference can change. Mm. So the. In Oh yeah, by the way, I look at the external promotions, so the result is very similar. Then I choose to report internal because I thought I measure the promotion more accurately if I focus on internal promotions. Yeah, And then the next question about the, um, the leadership style. So from what I know, the usually the difference is actually more um, in the middle level than in the top level. So it's uh, um, they found the, the differences in gender differences in leadership style is present at the middle level, but absent uh, in the um, top level. And here I only have very senior uh, executives, so I focus on the um, top level only. 